Following on from my previous review involving 3D graphics where it doesn't belong, I was infused to check out another such game, but this time on the Game Boy. Race Driving was released in 1993 by Argonaut Software. You might remember them as the developers of the SNES's Super FX chips. And published by THQ when they still had that odd asterisk thing going on. So, how does real-time 3D end up on a reflective LCD that's only 160 by 144 pixels? Well, this version of Race Driving is a port of an arcade machine released in 1990 by Atari, which was the sequel to 1989's Hard Driving, which was one of the very first arcade machines to feature fully 3D rendered environments. As you can imagine, Race Driving followed through with this same approach as its predecessor, but also introduced realistic vehicle physics. Amazingly, both the 3D graphics and the car physics have made it intact into this Game Boy version through the genius minds that were Argonaut Software. As it says on the box, 3D sensation! Yet, I have no idea how they pulled this off. I am unable to find any technical information online. However, pretty graphics never solely make a game, so let's see if it can pull away from what I like to refer to as demo scene syndrome and see if it's actually any fun to play. Even though the word race is in the title, racing per se isn't actually in the game. There are three tracks in total, with a goal being to beat the qualifying lap, although there is also a point system that increases depending on your own lap time. As well as being timed, there is also a countdown timer that increases after successfully driving through checkpoints. As you can imagine, if the time runs out, then it's game over rover. So really, the whole game is basically the usually underplayed time trials mode found in most racing games. Not that that is a bad thing of course, but once you beat the qualifying lap for each track, you will more or less be done. However, good luck doing that. Even on the easiest track, I never made that damn qualifying time. It always felt exactly one second out of reach. I was feeling a bit like trash because of it, but I ended up watching some other gameplay videos of the game, and no one else can seem to do it either. I couldn't find a single video where someone made the time, so for us, I no longer feel so bad, and can continue my life normally again. I was also unable to find a scan of the instruction manual anywhere on the interwebs. However, the one lone game facts guide I did find, which was written in 2012 funnily enough, claims that once you beat the qualifying round, there is a challenge lap where you supposedly do race a CPU opponent. I'll have to take their word for it though, since I was unable to do it myself, and can't find any video proof elsewhere on the web either. With that all out the way, let's take a gander at the rest of the game. As I said, there are three tracks, which are called Autocross, Stunt, and Super Stunt. Autocross is just a basic track with a few turns and whatnot, with the only way you can crash being a few inappropriately placed barns. Next up we have Stunt, which was also in Hard Driving. Very much like how it says race in the title and there is no racing, this is called Stunt and there are no stunts. However, while in Autocross you just had to avoid leaving the road and crashing into barns, in Stunt, the 3D graphics really start to shine. It adds elevated platforms, loops, trenches, and steeply banked corners that will have to be successfully navigated without crashing, all the while trying to beat that all to elusive qualifying time. Super Stunt ups the ante with the polygons, also including a cool hexagon-shaped tunnel. Additionally, there are other vehicles on the road which must be avoided. Speaking of the cars, there are four you can choose from. Interestingly, only the slowest is automatic. If you want a faster car, then you'll have to start shifting gears. The faster you go, the more points you'll learn, so there is a factor of replayability if you want to constantly keep improving your personal best. But otherwise, that's it. I guess you could commit and try to beat those qualifying times, but at most, you'll likely only get a few hours enjoyment out of race driving before moving on to greener pastures. But having said that, the handling and frame rates aren't all too shabby. In my previous review for Stunt Race FX, I noted that the frame rate could impede your ability to turn effectively in time. Surprisingly, this is not really an issue in race driving. It does dip a little when you're driving up or down a polygon, but since this has all been squeezed out of an 8-bit CPU that is chugging along at 4.19 MHz, I think I'll forgive it. The vehicle physics actually feel quite good and does make it quite playable, but really, the 3D graphics are the major draw card of this game. 3D on the Game Boy, I still can't believe it. Race driving is impressive and certainly playable, but once the wow factor diminishes, there's not much replayability to be had. I guess there are only three tracks because I doubt they could have physically shoved any more in, but sadly its own innovation leads to a lack of content. As well as the arcade original, this game received ports for the Genesis, the SNES, the Saturn, and a few computers of the day. It also features on the Midway Arcade Treasures 3 collection that can be found on 6th generation consoles. From what I've seen, the SNES port looks quite laggy, even this version has a better frame rate, but if you're looking for options, the Genesis port does look quite good. And, like always, there is the ever-faithful MAME if you wish to try the arcade original. 